Hey guys, it's Jamie, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a DIY junk journal. So this is finally it. So the first thing I like to do is uh, jot down a bunch of different ideas for different pages or different characters in the book. So as you can see here, I'm doing a Peter Pan one. So I'm do doing different characters and just different things that remind me of that character. I normally like to watch the movie while doing this. Um, and yeah, just think of different characters. Next thing I do is go and pick out different um, types of like scrapbooking paper that I find looks a lot like that specific character. If I'm doing a character page or a part of the movie page, whatever reminds me of different parts of the movie. So then I'll plan out whatever page I'm doing in what order so as you can see here and then I ended up switching it up a little bit after that way I can put all the different numbers on the pages so here I have all the different things and I flip them over and I have them so the nursery is the first one this is kind of confusing I feel like and so I put one on there so I know that that page it goes with the nursery and so I just match it up kind of like that and I go throughout all the different pages and go on the back of them and write down the different numbers that match with it if that makes any sense All right, after that, I go and cut out the different pages. So this is the measurements for the pages that I like to do. This was kind of hard to do one-handed, but it's eight and a half by 11 and a half inches. And I just have this piece of cardboard to make it a little bit easier. And so then I go and trace everything out to the specific thing that I need. And then I go and cut it all out by hand because I don't have one of those cutters that are big enough. So yeah, like I said, I'll just cut everything out. And sometimes the pages are a little bit different, ignore my legs. And so here I have just all of it cut out and I normally save the scraps, like the bigger scraps. And then I'll go ahead and fold all the different pages and make sure that they're folded to the right side that I want. And then I'm going to take one of these little sticky glue things and I'm going to attach the pages all together in the order of one, two, three, four, if like obviously, you know. So yeah, I'll just attach all the different pages together and then make sure that the inside is the scrapbooking paper that you want inside. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm not really making sense, but that's basically um, how you do that. So then I'll just go ahead and make sure that all the different pages are exactly where I want them so I don't have to like take them off and um, put them in new spots. And as you can see on the back, it's kind of like boingy here, but we're going to fix that after. So then you're going to take different things that you want to cut out and you're going to start trimming everything. So I like to take books from the thrift stores or anything like that and I'll take it and I'll rip all the pages out of them and just find that a little bit easier than um, printing everything out. I feel like that's like, it's a good way to recycle books. So I will, yeah, like I said, go to thrift stores and find different things. Some things I'll use like little old sewing patterns or just random things I find around the house or at thrift stores. So then I decided to uh, go along the binding with an X-Acto knife and just trim it or a pair of scissors apparently. Normally I use an X-Acto knife because it is a little bit easier but I kind of cut the binding on accident so just be careful of doing that and um, yeah so then you can just pry the pages apart easier than just ripping them I guess and uh, yeah, and be careful with the like the outside cover of the book because you want to keep that. We're going to use that later on. So then I go through and I trim the pages and I find out whatever one, whatever side of the page that I want to use. And then I'll use my little cutter tool and I will trim everything up. And uh, once again, this is kind of hard to do one-handed because um, I kind of just like took you guys along. I didn't have a tripod to do this. So anyways, I, um, yeah, I'll just cut all the different things that... After I cut out all the different pages, I'm going to go ahead and take them and put them into different piles for the different pages. So I'll have a page for John or Wendy or Michael and I'll put all the pictures of John. I'll put all the pictures of Wendy into all different piles and just if some of them are like group pictures, I'll just pick whatever one has the least amount of pictures and put it into their pile. And then I just have them all set out here on the counter and then I'm going to start putting them in just a very simple um, one to do so you're gonna want to like kind of plan out your pages a little bit but I just kind of like randomly place them and then put things in after but do it like very simply and I like to go through it the entire book and do this first and then I find it easier to 
um, put things in after. So I'll put out some flip out pages and different things like that, but I don't put anything in it yet. And then, as you can see, this is what I've got so far. And then sometimes, like this little bear, I will put a few things in, but mostly just pictures. So something I like to do more recently is be making little clay charms for the inside of the books to make it more pop out and because I can't find things as easily for certain books. So right here I'm making the crocodile's teeth and I do get dust in my clay very easily and I don't understand how I can prevent that. Even though I wipe all the surfaces down, I don't, I don't know. Anyways, so I put all of the, I make all of my little clay charms and whatever I can kind of think of go off the list that I had before. Then I go and bake the clay charms into the oven and then I attach them once they're all dry into my book. And then I will show you guys a finished result of all of this afterwards. So for the binding of the book itself, I just kind of made this up randomly, so this is how I'm going to show you guys how I do it. So I take some tacky glue and then I put it on the, uh, the binding of it, and I ended up having to cut this open because it was almost finished. And then I'm going to spread it out and make sure it's all evenly, like... Yeah, spread out and I kind of like to squeeze the book together to make sure that there's nothing too much like into the to the creases I guess and then you're gonna take two paint sticks and you're going to put them on either side then you're gonna take these weird little clippy things I got them from my dad's garage and then you're just going to place them there and let it sit for about um, I'd let it sit for a couple of hours so for the book cover you're going to take any sort of cover you want I like to use the actual book cover from the original book and then I'll take some cardboard from or paperboard kind of thing from another book that I have used pictures from and cut it out and then I'm going to glue it onto the binding of the book and then that way it kind of sits like this if that makes any sense kind of like that and then I'm going to glue it down with just some hot glue and then I'm going to start poking holes into it. So right now I'm just finding the center of the book and if there's not an exact center it's not a huge big deal. And then I'm going to take it and then measure out where to poke holes. So I just take this little tool here that I have from my dad's garage yet again and it's just a certain kind of screwdriver and I just poke a hole through it um, and then it goes all the way through and that way I can put string through. You want it to be big enough so then you can put a needle through, like one of those bigger needles, and then I just do it to the binding of the, or like the cover of the book as well and make sure it's all lined up. Then I'm going to take some of this, whatever this kind of thread is called, and then I'm going to take it and poke, or put it through the one of these really big needles. I just get these from the dollar store, and I just find them a little bit easier than a regular needle, and then I'm just going to loop it through this kind of way, so it's like a double, and not just a single kind, and then I'm going to put it through my book. So it's kind of easier for you to just watch than for me to explain, but um, you're just going to want to poke it through the top, uh, on both sides obviously and then I'm going to make sure not to pull it all the way through just so then I can tie it on the other side so then I take this and put it through very simple just like sewing and you're going to yeah poke it all the way through and um, then you're gonna put your needle through like the other string to kind of secure it a little bit easier So then I like to do this um, just a, like about two or three more times and then I secure it with some tacky glue just so it makes sure it doesn't like poke through the, um, the book after you're finished binding it. So then I'll do it obviously to the top and bottom and yeah, like I said, secure it with some tacky glue and then you can also add a charm right in the back there and then you can finish it up in the back with some tape or any kind of scrapbooking paper, however you want to do. And that is how I make my junk journal. So if you guys want to see the finished product of this, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.